Hi, I'm George Levy. I believe we're changing the world one blockchain at a time. And if we use this technology properly, we're bound to make the world a better place for everyone. So to help make this happen in this video, I answer a question from one of the students of the Bitcoin Advanced Level Transactions course. And the question is, what are Bitcoin transaction confirmations? That's an excellent question. And I'll give you the answer right after this. In this video, we're going to be talking about Bitcoin transactions and the importance of confirmations. To do so, I'm actually going to take you through a Bitcoin transaction live so you can see it arrive. You can look at the confirmation process and I'll explain to you the importance of it as we go through it. Right now on your screen, what you're seeing is my Jax wallet and you're seeing my Bitcoin address in my Jax wallet. There's no risk in me sharing with you that Bitcoin address. Your Bitcoin address is a public piece of information you can share with everybody because your Bitcoin address is where you receive Bitcoins. What you can't share is your private key, which enables you to spend those Bitcoins. So right now, what you're really seeing is my Jax Bitcoin wallet and you see my Bitcoin address. And for the purposes of this video, what I am going to be doing is I am going to be sending myself Bitcoin from a different wallet, a mobile wallet in this case. For this example, I'm actually going to be using a wallet called Copay. And what I'm going to use with Copay is I am going to be taking my Bitcoins from my Copay wallet and sending them to my Jax wallet. And you're going to see it all happen in, a, in real time. First thing I'm going to do is, as you can see, I've got right now here, this is my Bitcoin address, and I am going to scan it from my actual Copay wallet. So what you will see here is that the Copay wallet will enable me to actually have my scanner and I'll be able to scan that address. So right now my Copay wallet has my Jax wallet address ready and I am ready to send some Bitcoins to it. The next thing I need to do is check to make sure that the Bitcoin address on my Jax wallet matches the Bitcoin address on my Copay wallet. The last thing you wanna do is send Bitcoins to the wrong address because Bitcoin transactions are non-reversible. So if you make a mistake, you sent it to the wrong address, you can't take that back. So in this case, I'm checking and this Bitcoin address actually starts with one PIN. This one does as well. And what we will do right now is I am going to program the amount that I'm sending. And I'm going to send a very small amount. I'm actually going to send 0 0.00005 Bitcoins, which is at the time of this recording, approximately 40 cents. And what you're going to send in this case, it's going to calculate the fees. It's actually telling me that the fees are actually going to work out to about that amount. So about 20 cents are going to go straight to uh, the fees. But I understand and I accept it. And right now, my wallet is basically asking me if I want to send this transaction. And what I'm going to do with you is once I send it, you're going to be able to see how quickly my transaction will be received by my Jax wallet. So right now I am going to slide to send. The system is broadcasting the transaction. It just tells me the payment has been sent. So let me look now and you see there was a payment received in the time that I actually did that. You saw how quickly it arrived. However, the Bitcoins are in a transaction, but that transaction is not yet confirmed. And what that means is that that transaction has not yet been added to a block added to the Bitcoin blockchain. Let's look inside the Jax wallet so that, what that looks like. The Jax wallet actually enables me to actually click it open and actually look inside a block explorer to see that transaction. And it'll give me a lot of information about this. In this case, it'll tell me exactly what the amount transacted was and what were the fees involved. In this case, they were 0 0.00002476. That was actually minor fees. And uh, what you'll see is that there are zero out of six confirmations. And JAX actually tells the six amount because when you have six confirmations, what you really have is you have confidence that that transaction has been completed and that it's non-reversible. There's no way that it could wound up in an orphan block or wound up being in a temporary fork. Or if anybody were actually to try to like tamper with that block, when you have six confirmations, it's actually six blocks deep into the blockchain. And I'll show you exactly how that works. Right now, that transaction is inside what is known as the mempool. So I'm going to take you to the mempool. And what you see right now on your screen is all the unconfirmed transactions that are actually going into the Bitcoin network. There's actually 2.7 new transactions coming in per second into the Bitcoin network. And in those, there's currently 2,706, 8, 10, 11, 12 unconfirmed transactions. And those unconfirmed transactions keep building up because miners are right now looking through all these unconfirmed transactions to group them together 
and place them into new blocks that will be added into the Bitcoin blockchain. Let's see what that's going to look like. And to do that, I'm actually going to take you into a block explorer. So this is a block explorer. In this case, I'm using blockchain.info. And what we find is that the latest block available is 518,797. Let's look inside that block to see what I mean. When you look inside that block, what you'll see is that there's currently 3,026 transactions. And you see a breakdown of all the transactions in that block. Let's choose one just to show you something. Let's choose this transaction right here. And let's look inside it. What we see is that this transaction currently has one confirmation. And that's because it's in the most recent block in the blockchain. It just has one confirmation. Let me take you back to the front of the list of all the blocks from blockchain.info. And if I choose one, say, three blocks deep, 518,795, let's look inside that block. And we find there's 1,066 transactions in that block. When we go down, let's just choose another transaction here. What you'll find is that that transaction has three confirmations because so far it had the initial confirmation from the block it was in, then there was a new block created on top of it, and then there was another block created on top of it. So it has three confirmations. Let's go to yet another view of this. So you see exactly what I mean. To do so, I want to take you to a platform that's available at demoblockchain.org slash blockchain. And what you're going to see here is that this is a demo of a blockchain, and you're going to see that it actually has a list of blocks. It's block one, block two, block three, block four, block five. And this is a chronological order of blocks as they're built in. What we find is that the, the most recent block is block number five, and that block actually has a hash starting with a certain number of zeros. That leading number of zeros is essential in Bitcoin because what that means is that a miner actually did the required proof of work to be able to create that block. And that block is valid within the Bitcoin blockchain. Let me show you something really quick when I go back to the blockchain.info page. When you look at the blocks again, you will find that this block, which we looked at, has a hash, which has a corresponding number of leading zeros in the front. It's very difficult to get a hash with that many zeros in front. And that's what miners do. They constantly compete to find a hash with the required number of zeros for it in order to be able to sign that block and make it valid. So let's go back to that blockchain demo that I spoke to you about. And at this moment, as you see, this is the latest block. This is the block, first block in the entire chain. So this would have one confirmation. If I were to make any change to this block, it would change the hash and that block would no longer be valid. That's where Bitcoin uses hashes to preserve the integrity of the blocks. But let's do something specific. Let's say that I don't have just one confirmation. I have a transaction that's three confirmations deep, right? Which would be in this block. If somebody were to make a change to any transaction in this block, it would not only break that block, but it would also break the block in front of it and the block in front of it. That's why it's so difficult. If you have a transaction that's in a block buried deep in the blockchain, it's very, very difficult to be able to make a modification or that for some reason the transaction would not be valid. Because not only would the miner have to recreate this one block, that miner would have to remine re this block, then remine the following block and remine the following block. And there would just not be enough time because new blocks are created on average approximately every 10 minutes. And that is why having a minimum of six confirmations whenever you accept a Bitcoin transaction is so important and how Bitcoin confirmations work in the Bitcoin blockchain. I hope you enjoyed this video and that you learned something in the process. I bring you brand new videos every single week, so I invite you also to subscribe so we can stay in touch. Also, if you have any comments or suggestions, please leave them below. I would love to hear from you. Until next time, we are changing the world, one blockchain at a time. I'm George Levy. Thank you for watching.